sigma notation. Let's take a look at a tricky question uh, to do with sums, with sigma notation. So it says, given that the sum from r equals 1, the first term, to some unknown term k of this sequence is this number, show that this is true. Okay, now, in A-level maths, we need to recognize certain summations. This is a geometric sequence because we have a base number and a power. So these are the powers of minus 2, okay? Now, you can generate terms of the sequence by just subbing in different values of r. r is 1, r is 2, r is 3, etc. And to go from term to term, you're just multiplying by minus 2, okay? So, I mean, we can, I can show you some. Your first term, when subbing in 1, would be 3 times minus 2, which is minus 6. The second term, subbing in r is 2, minus 2 squared is 4 times 3, 12, etc. You can see you're multiplying by minus 2. That's your common ratio. And your first term is minus 6. So, they're saying that sum from r equals 1 to k is this. We need to show that this situation is true. So, now that we know it's a geometric sequence, what is the sum of a geometric sequence up to k terms. The sum of k terms is a, 1 minus r, use a bracket here, to the power of n, n is k this time, all over 1 minus r, and r is minus 2. Now they're saying that is minus 262, uh, 146. Now what I always advise my students to do is to calculate this part first, because we should notice that as being the sum to infinity. So that's minus 6 divided by 3, which is minus 2. And then you do this divided by this. Okay, so I don't know why my calculator is on the Poisson distribution. It must have been Nick. Uh, then we do minus 262, 146 divided by the answer. We get 131073. So we're left with 1 minus minus 2 to the power of k, is 131073. Switch things around, we can bring that here and bring this here. So bring that here, bring this here. Okay, so we're gonna have one minus this, one minus the answer, so that's minus 131072 is minus two to the power of k. Now from here, what we want to do is take logs, right? Now the problem with that is we can't do log of base numbers being negative. Because if we take logs on both sides, you're going to have log of a negative, and then you're also going to have log of a negative. It's not looking good, Mike. Now, what does that imply to us? This implies to us that k must be odd. Why? Because if we don't think of it in terms of logs, the powers of minus 2 are going to go negative, positive, negative, positive, etc. So for this power to be negative, it must imply that k is odd. Now, if k is odd, we can break this up. We can say it like this. We can say this is minus 1 times 2, so we can break up as minus 1 to the power of k, and then 2 to the power of k. Now, this is like a more professional way of looking at it. Or you could say 131072 equals 2 to the power of k. Okay, we forget about the negative, but I'm showing you guys what's going on here. Now, if k is odd, minus 1 to the power of an odd number is minus 1. Okay, minus 1 squared would be 1, minus 1 cubed would be minus 1. So, what that means is, we're left with minus 131072 is the negative of 2 to the power of k, which the negatives cancel. Now, we can take log of both sides. So, we get log of this equals, bring down the k, k log 2. Okay. So we have log of 131072 is k log 2. Okay? And then we divide. Now the only thing is, is they've got like this really awkward looking summation. And I'm wondering how we, you know, get that from this. I'm wondering what the relation, so the log 2, I can see how it could relate to the log 4, obviously by doubling both sides and bringing up the power 2. But this is minus 1. Now, 131, 131072, if I divide that by this to just see how they relate to each other, I get 2. So this 
is two lots of uh, 65, 5, 3, 6. Because then we can split that up, right? We can write that as log 2 plus log 65, 5, 3, 6 is k log 2. And then we can just divide through by log 2, k minus 1. I'm thinking, you know, of rearranging it in a different way, but dividing through by log 2, dividing that by log 2, you get 1 plus log 65, 5, 3, 6 over log 2 is k. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is going to minus 1. So I'm going to minus the 1 from the both sides. And then we divide both sides by 2. Now, when I divide this by 2, the 2 here goes to the denominator, which as it comes up to the top, you get 2 squared, which is log 4, and that's now proved. Nice. Tough proof that. Now that we've proved it, let's move on to part B, which is now telling us to find the value of k. Now, I'm just assuming to find the value of k. Also, this is really hard to rub out, man. What's going on? Usually, it's like super simple. Mate, this is painful. All right, so what we got? I think we just type in the in the calculator what we had before, right? So, uh, where's my calculator? It's in my hand. I'm literally just going to type that in. So I get log of six five five three six over log of four gives us eight. So, for part two, we have k minus one over two is eight. Times by 2, add 1, k is 17. And then part b. For this value of k, find this summation. Now remember, this is a geometric sequence, so we can use the geometric sum. But we have to be careful about what we're actually summing here. If k is 17, we're summing up to 19 from the fifth term. Now, there's many ways you can do this. Further mathematicians would probably split this up and say I'm going to sum from 1 to 19 minus the sum from 1 to 4, okay? I'm going to show you guys how you can do it without doing that. It's just in further maths, we do a lot more algebraic summations rather than actual numbers. So we're summing from the fifth term of the sequence. Now, you just sum in 5 to find the first term of what you're summing. So my first term in this sequence is 3 times minus 2 to the power of 5, which is what? 3 times minus 32, minus 96. My common ratio is still minus 2. How many terms are we summing? What's n in this case? Now, what most students do, they take these away and say we're summing 14 terms. That's not true. Let me give you guys another example. I always tell my students to just give a different example an example where you can count with your fingers, okay? We are starting with the fifth term, up to the tenth term. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is six terms. You're not just doing ten minus five. You're doing ten minus five plus one. Now you're adding one because if you just do ten minus five, you're getting rid of this term that you're trying to sum, right? So here, you're doing nineteen minus five, plus 1, okay, which is 15 terms. All right, so let's sum those 15 terms on this uh, board that doesn't seem to want to rub out. Okay, so using my summation formula, I'm summing 15 terms. My first term is minus 96, then 1 minus r to the power of n, which is 15, all over 1 minus r. All right, so we got minus 96, 1 minus minus 2 to the power of 15, all over 1 plus 2. So I get a hefty minus 104, 86, 08. 
Now, obviously, with something like this, you can check your answer in the calculator. It does have a summation button, so I'm going to check this now uh, after I cut it. But guys, if you learned something today, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content. Uh, if you're interested in my A-level maths courses, details are in the description. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback. Nice.